this is Between Shelf and Screen. I'm Alex. I'm Ryan. And today we're going to go over the road movie, not book, the movie. So if you haven't listened to our last episode about the road, the book, um, where I reviewed that, go ahead and listen to that and then because we'll be mentioning that a lot in this episode and there will be spoilers on the movie. We did that one first. Yes. <laughs> yes, we... Read the book first, and then we cover the movie. So yes. it's important to know what we talked about to be able to understand most of what we uh, talk about in this. I feel like it's also necessary to, to say, like, we will let you know if we watch them or we watch the movie before we had read the book. Right. Because that will definitely yeah, it's, change it's, our... Uh, change our kind of experience. Yes. Yeah. So this time we did read the book first and watch the movie, so... Go ahead, if you haven't listened to our previous episode. But if not, we're going to go ahead and transition (laughs) into our overall feelings about it. So, do you want to start? Yeah, so, overall, watching this movie, um, I guess star rating, I would give this a solid, like, middle ground. This was just like... Like a 2.5? No, it, it is about a 3 I'd say, um, like it, it wasn't unenjoyable, but it wasn't enjoyable. So it was like a three out of five. I should clarify. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm right there too. I'm, I'm sitting at a three point or a three out of five. Yeah. I was about to say 3.5. <laughs> three out of five. Not 3.5. Maybe a 3.25 if we're being generous. No, nah, three. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stick at a three. So, yeah. So, yeah like, and we have opinions on different parts of that, which we'll kind of get into, like, characters, plot, cinematography, and all that. Yeah, I would say, overall, I'm saying, yeah, like I said, three out of five. And um, I liked this more than the book. I definitely did. Yeah. I and, think we both rated this higher than the book, too. Yeah, and I think, um, I don't know, this, this also, I've noticed this for me. I don't really get like, like this is obviously like a tearjerker, like a very emotional story. Yes. And I don't really get that, like I, I won't sit there and cry while reading. Like I, I have done that before, like, but it <laughs> takes like a lot from a book. Yeah. Like it has to hit me with the right words and then my brain's just like, you need to cry. But, like, <laughs> <laughs> That's the only time you cry too. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> but like movies, they def- something about seeing the faces and like just watching people on screen as opposed to just reading about it and imagining it. Something about seeing them makes me much more emotionally invested. Yeah, you feel more connected to. Yeah, see, I, I only connect to animals, people, not not too emotional about. So you, you, you never cried for a movie. <laughs> no, that's a total lie. <laughs> but it takes a lot for me to cry with. A movie. Um, yeah. Just in general, and especially with... It doesn't take a lot for me. <laughs> I'm, I'm a baby. Like, that's the only place that I'm allowed to cry, because I, I'm a man. <laughs> no, we're not doing that toxic masculinity. Okay. We'll yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to talk to Leah about this. Okay, fine. fine. But anyway. Lisa, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> I said my therapist <laughs> Anyways. Anywho, all right, all right. <laughs> oh wait, hold up. I gotta, I gotta get all my thoughts out, my initial thoughts. So yeah, yeah. So with that being said, I found the movie to be much more emotionally involved. At least, at least I was. And now that I could kind of see it, like, played out. Well, I, okay. I will say this first. The book was actually, like I said, in like before in the previous podcast, that it was. Very good with the description, and so good in fact that like every single scene that I could remember, like reading, it looked exactly like that movie. Like yeah, exactly. They, they we will say. Um, actually, I don't want to speak for you, but in my opinion, it was very well constructed. Like the movie, mm-hmm. really was just like how I imagine it reading the book. Yeah. Um, there were definitely some differences as any adaptation will have, but honestly, it was very on par just in general 
with how the book went and like yeah it's a, it's a good adaptation very faithful and I think they honestly the director caught a lot of fat and I think that needed to happen yes because yes. my god like like we said in a podcast before talking about the book like it was, there was parts where it was just droning on and on and I don't know who the hell the editor was of this book <laughs> but they I don't know why they didn't just cut some scenes out that were just pointless but right, the just, movie did and that's what made it so much more enjoyable yeah and we know like the book was kind of supposed to feel like a drag I mean the point is they're running not running but like walking along this road trying to get to their destination and they're in the middle of an apocalypse and it's just them two the father and the son and so it's supposed to be hard it's supposed to feel Bleak. like you're in, yeah and you're in their place not really knowing what to do next how to have the motivation to go forward but still it was just some not, scenes were just not needed yeah i could get the point um or he could give the point across by not including just random dialogues of just repetitive things <laughs> it yeah. did not work yeah like um, in this just being like how did, like dad how do i tie a show you do i get like this okay like we don't really need that yeah. it's like if we watched halo but then like halo like <laughs> like we just watch master chief like in the process <laughs> it takes for him to go take a shit or something <laughs> like we don't need to know that we did we know what happens we don't need to know how he does it you know what i mean right and, it was but the, and even when it got descriptive like there, the atmosphere when it described the atmosphere it was nice because we really didn't get that much mm -hmm. um of like actually knowing about the apocalypse and in the road i mean like movie that we didn't get that either though yeah um, but it was when it was trying to be descriptive it just also didn't work because we didn't it was it felt like it was describing the wrong things things that were useless and things that we as readers didn't want to <laughs> read yeah. about or um and in the movie it just kind of didn't cover those parts where we were reading thinking wow why is this dragging on like that i feel like the movie did a good part of focusing on what really needed to be said and getting that through the like showing it through the movie yeah and i always felt like in the movie like like, I've always been told about writing, or just, like, as far as scenes, just individual scenes, like, how do I say this? It's always important when you're writing a scene like that for it to advance the plot in some way, whether that be, like, developing your characters more, or, you know, just developing the world, or moving the plot forward in, in like, any direction. Like, you need to have that sort of momentum. Or even yeah. honing in and repeating something that is a main focus and needs to be said. Yeah. But it was it, just like bad. scenes have to have a purpose. Yeah. And it felt like it was just trying to repeat the whole story over and over. Mm -hmm. And there honestly, as we kind of mentioned in the last episode, there really was no development period. Like we just felt like it kept mm -hmm. going back and back and it was only introduction throughout the whole book, which yeah. I think the movie did a good job and we'll kind of get into once we get into the like, spoiler section of the movie, um, we'll get into how, like, even at the start, we started, like, um, where the book would be at, like, page, I'd say, probably 80 or yeah. something. That was, like, the very first scene where it was the first action point. Um, after giving a little bit of introduction of the world and a flashback of how the apocalypse kind of started, and then introduced the white. Not how, just when it started. Kinda. Yeah, when it started, yeah. my bad. We still don't know how the apocalypse started or anything, but it went over, or it covered introducing the wife, the what? father, and the son, which I also liked that they decided to introduce the wife at the very beginning. Yeah. And really kind of develop her character throughout the whole movie rather than a few scenes in the book. Yeah, it sprinkled it throughout, which, like, definitely, like... It was refreshing. Yeah, and also I feel like it kept me, like, wanting to keep watching. And, and learn wanted more. to know the past and yeah. get more hints about that. But 
after it kind of covered that short little like five minute introduction it went into like the first scene where they run into that gang and the one guy steps outside of the group right and sees the father and the son well no actually i i think it started like when the like it's the guy waking up from a dream right yeah started, after that yeah. was what the introduction was kind of like the dream flashback kind of state okay yeah yeah sorry yeah. I thought you, I thought you something there. but yeah then, then it goes right into that and that's yeah. like right when it gets interesting too yes. like that's you know okay and you're getting kind of a feel for like the world i guess and like the people and you're like okay this is interesting it's actually captivating yeah and, it was off to a better start than the book yeah, and then I guess and we're kind of already into the spoilers, but yes. I'll, I'll go ahead and give the warning now. Like we're gonna get into heavy spoilers, but yes. so then right after he shoots that guy in the head, then he grabs his uh, boy, and then he runs into the woods. Like I thought, one of the most striking scenes to me was when he was sitting there and he had the gun to his son's head, and like you could see the people in the background looking for him. I was like, damn, that's like that's like a heavy scene right off the bat. Yeah. And that, that'll keep you there. Yes, which... Oh, I, don't, I don't remember that in the book, though. Yeah, overall, that scene, I would say, mirrored the book, even though it was later in the book. Yeah. Um, it mirrored it, except for that part and kind of how the kid reacted. Like, I feel like it didn't show that at all. Like, the gun was definitely more of a focus in the movie, I felt like. Yeah. Um, than it was in the book. Even though it was still important, it was more honed in on using it for the sun rather than like against someone else um well I, like what i was mentioning specifically like he had his own gun to his son's head right that's what yeah. i'm saying okay. which they didn't i feel like they didn't do that until later in the book or the author didn't bring that up okay yeah um while the movie like show like the father is willing to save his son almost yeah like um, to protect have mercy him. have yeah. mercy on him Instead of what most likely would happen in that world, since it was alluded to that a lot of the people are now cannibals, since there's such a lack of food. Like there's no food. Which yeah. I think that, I want to say this too now that I'm thinking about it, that is so accurate to like an apocalypse scenario, especially when it's like, whatever the hell's happening, like it's, <laughs> <laughs> there's no like sun and it's always cold. Yeah. So... That makes sense that they wouldn't have any more crops, and it would make sense that everybody's cannibals. So yeah. uh, props to Cormac McCarthy yeah. for like making that kind of distinction of realism. Yeah. I think that's and not shying that. away from it. Yeah, because in every like apocalypse movie, like uh, I mentioned The Last of Us and the last <laughs> <laughs> the last podcast, but I'm gonna mention it again. But like it's like showing twenty years in the future at mm -hmm. a certain point, and then you still see people eating canned food, and it's like. That hasn't ran out yet. Right. <laughs> you know? Like, we know it has a crazy long shelf life, but seriously. Some years. people are greedy <laughs> and will that will not last. Um, yeah. And somehow it's just magically always there. Yeah. It is interesting. Um, which I think the apocalypse, I mean, the sun had, like, just been born around the start of it, I believe. Mm -hmm. And he was probably, like... Oh my gosh, I'm so bad with ages. Oh no, <laughs> so he's like eight, eight or ten around the time that like you see him with the father, yeah. and then but he's born right at the beginning of like all this stuff. So it's like eight years in. So yeah. the world is depleted of supplies. Yes, and they can't grow any crops. Right. And people so, are always moving, which they need the nutrients to yeah. be traveling. So everybody's starving. Which, like, makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, I didn't think... that Eight years, they had to eat food in that time? I could last yeah. eight years, personally, yeah. without any food. Yeah. Dude, I don't eat food. Like. <laughs> as long as I have I my tea. Oh, yeah. Constantly well, regenerate. Is that cannibalism, though? No. If it's yourself? <laughs> if you like, stick your foot and then, like, shove it in your mouth and then, like... Just continually ate. <laughs> and it grows back. That's right. I forgot that we yeah. could do that. It's kind of like a lizard's tail. Yeah. But only your feet grow back, right? Yes. So you have to only eat your foot and then wait for it to grow back and then like just keep munching. 
That makes sense. I mean, yeah. where else is it supposed to go? It goes down south. Cormac McCarthy. <laughs> if you want to make another apocalypse, fuck, <laughs> just call me up. <laughs> or if this director wants to just he wants to continue on the apocalypse path. Yeah. We could we could do a great story when it comes to screens. We could even act in it. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna be the one that eats. Though. I'm eating myself. <laughs> yeah, personally, I'm gonna go the eight years without eating. Period. I'll be that uh, character. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> should just be skinny. <laughs> That's not even acting. <laughs> <Yeah>. But okay, <laughs> back to the actual review. Okay. What are we? Okay. Um, so we yeah. kind of got of our overall feelings out. Right. I guess. And then characters. How do we feel about it compared to the book? How. Okay. I think they were presented. It is a faithful adaptation, if that's not clear already. It's a very faithful. And uh, so I have a question here that I kind of wanted to bring up. I'm like, so obviously reading the book and now seeing the movie, which we think a little bit more high of, do, do you think like now that you've seen the movie and we liked it a little bit more, does it live up to the hype that the story kind of has? Hmm. Hype of the Blitzer Prize yeah. winning novel. Yeah. Does it live um, up to did that? Did the movie help, like, I guess... Did it hire your opinion of the story? I think... Okay, I kind of mentioned this in the book, I would feel like. And the movie only, like, helped kind of hone in the point of, like... I think it's an amazing topic, and I love character dynamics, especially when it comes to, like, a parent and a child. I think you can show... Trip. A lot, a lot with that, um, but I still don't think. Even though this was a faithful adaptation, there's only so much you could do with what uh, Cormac McCarthy had actually put in the book, and I don't think it really uh, made it my opinion any higher. But like your just thought of the story and like right, as a like. Whole. Yeah, if it was worth the hype, I don't. I still don't think it. I don't necessarily think I would recommend this to anyone yeah. unless they specifically liked this kind of just like leaving it up to the imagination or leaving it broad so people can take it with their like take their opinions their own way and liked apocalyptic it's stories. It's for the people who are like rubbing their chin. <laughs> <laughs> they really like using that thing up in their head, whatever sure. that's called. <laughs> no, I just want to be spoon fed the story. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I agree. I I don't think it lives up to that hype, even with the movie. Like I I thought it was kind of like a uh, like a good indie film, yeah. and um, yeah, it felt kind of artsy. Like that's the only way I could kind of describe it. It felt yeah. kind of like artsy, and like the cinematography was really good. The acting was pretty. Pretty solid. I'd say that, uh, yeah, and I don't know any of the actors. Like, I, I didn't either, recognize that was, them. That was kind of nice. Except, didn't the kid turn? He, yeah, I remember looking him up and he was in a lot, but he was also a kid actor and, like, who, who cares? Yeah, it was, like, probably <laughs> one of his starter, like, bigger films. Who cares about kid actors? <laughs> <laughs> They're just going to get strung out in Coke, like, five years later. So, like, <laughs> exactly. And lose all their net worth. So, like, <laughs> No, no, he was a good actor, though. I like the kid actor. Yeah, that's oh, issues serious. with the, the whole community of having children. That's a whole different topic. Yeah. We'll make a whole separate podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. I, I think that actors did a really good job. Um, the dialogue itself, I mean, kind of just what you could take from the book. It was, eh. There was Char Char Charlize Ther Theron. I'm pretty sure it was in it. Hold up, <laughs> I'm gonna look. Pause. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna make. Yeah, like as far as like the cast. Yeah. Cast of. Look up the like, kid actor too while you're at it. Yeah, I'm look up the whole cast. So, yeah, Charlize Theron. Theron. What is Charlize she in? Jurassic Park. Oh, that's right. Atomic Blonde. Yeah. She's in a lot, and like, she's fine. <laughs> no, that's no, your opinion of her yeah no that's my whole opinion no she's she's a great actress and yeah there's this uh, Guy Pierce. Uh, I'm sure somebody will know in like the audience once this starts getting some views but Guy Pierce, he's in a lot and then so the main guy 
um, the man. <laughs> it literally <laughs> says. It literally says in the caption. You know the man. It's just like the man, the you boy. You know who he is. Yeah, and then Cody. Uh, so yeah, Vigo Mortensen is the man. Mm-hmm. Weird name. And then <laughs> <laughs> the boy's name is Cody Smith McPhee. So yeah. I think we were pretty. We literally just assumed. Oh yeah, they haven't been in anything. They probably a lot of them have been in popular films, and we were just like I think Viggo, uncultured. I think Viggo Mortensen has been in quite a few things. Yeah. Uh, oh, he's been in Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Rings. Well, okay. I uh, I have not seen it, so that's not on me. <laughs> yeah, I've I, I mean I've seen that one. I haven't watched all the Lord of the Rings movies. I'm sorry. Well, you're Fantasy saving it so thing. we can cover all, however many there are, at once in one episode. You're right. And then binge watch. Every single movie is like five hours. It's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, if you want us to do that, right. just comment yeah. down below. Yeah. Like, no yeah. promises. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know if you felt like the same way, but like there was the flashback talking about the wife. Mm-hmm. Sorry. And... The flashback, like, at the beginning, specifically, of the movie, mm-hmm. where it's, like, all bright. They're looking at the flowers. He sees his wife, and they're, like, super happy. It's very bright, colorful. Mm-hmm. I don't think that was in the book. No, it was not. And, and a lot of the flashback scenes weren't, which yeah. I am which so I glad. I'm so glad the movie did that. Yeah. Because I think the flash, um, flashbacks really tied in just, and, like, made us actually care about the wife. Because he brought yeah. it up and how the... The guy, or the man, sorry, yeah. was upset about the wife, of course, uh, like, when she left them. But, like, we really never cared for her, so it was just like, oh, that sucks, Yeah, it's just like, man. oh, the selfish woman left, you know. Yeah, and it was like, that sucks. Okay, anyways, now let's talk about how the world is gray and it sucks again. Right, yeah, and we talked about in the last podcast that um, we really wanted more about the wife, and we got it. In this movie, which was just, yes. like, perfect. Yeah. I'm so glad that they decided to make her more of an active character. Or not yeah. necessarily like, active, because like it was all person. flashbacks. Yes. Like a whole person. And got, like, more of a dynamic. Because we only ever saw her in the book when she was like, this world sucks, I can't live in this, I have to go. And we were like, okay. And then okay. she just walks... Yeah. And she she's walks outside, and then uh, I guess she just dies. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, we got to see more of the happy moments uh, that they shared before the apocalypse. Yeah. And and then there was that whole conversation, which it showed in the book, but like seeing it on screen, where like basically the the wife or the mother is sitting there, like, I want to die, and like she's talking about what like while her son's just playing in the background, yes. and then like just her. You could tell, like, it was a conversation. Like, just the acting was so good. You could tell, like, the way they were acting it, it was a conversation that, like, the, the man and the wife had had for, like, years. Where she's just like, there's no point continuing. Mm-hmm. And the the man's just like, I'm, we need to keep going, we need to keep going. And you could tell at this point with this conversation, the ma- or the wife is sitting there like, I'm done. I'm going to go die. And, like... The guy, uh, the man isn't even like arguing anymore. He's just like right. defeated and he's like sad. And that he's was like, begging. yeah, and that was like a tearjerker moment for me because I'm like, really? dang, like that, that is something that the book can never pull off. Yes, and I think it was as you mentioned, like you could tell that they had had that conversation like throughout this whole. I mean, the kid was probably six or seven, however yeah. old at this point. They had been having this conversation for years, but they never showed that, which proves that you don't need to actually repeat yourself to show like how repetitive the scene is like we could tell this had been a conversation they had with them only showing it once due to the words and how the characters reacted it wasn't like the man was shocked that she was bringing this up yeah he was just desperate for her and that's like important and that goes into the advantages of movies because like you have so many different tools that like other than a book like i'm not saying like books or movies are better obviously but i'm saying like with movies like you have the advantage of if you have good actors then like there are things unsaid that don't need to be said that are just conveyed from like facial expressions and tones like and they lucked out with this cast because there was really really solid and like one line that sticks with me specifically from that scene was like she was just like if it weren't for you i'd take the boy with me 
and they're like both in tears. It's so it's really sad. It, like, yeah, I think that was the most emotional scene, and we really didn't get to feel that in the book. Like, yeah, it just was so shut short and just like cut and dry. Yeah, and I was like, man, that sucks for him, but okay. And in that movie. Like, I could feel the desperation from both parties of her wanting to get out of this world and him just wanting her to hold on, keep hope and everything. Yeah, so um, that was, like, as far as the movie, like, and the director, just, like, hats off to you. It's like, you, like, they nailed that scene. Yes. Like, it was perfect. Like, I wouldn't have done anything different. Yeah. I, I do agree with you. <laughs> I'm on a, that. You could tell I'm a director. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm a big man director. As you mentioned about how like the movie movies definitely have an advantage over that, and like I feel like it definitely depends on the stories because overall, I genuinely like the book more than movies because you can really. I don't know. The movie can't. You can usually, get. In, I think you can go in so much more detail, and there's yes. like. You can't express as much in like a movie because of the time restriction. And there's also inner monologue that's like huge, yeah. and you can describe things in books. Vast detail. Vast detail. Like you could be going like you could have a character go like about their day to day tasks and like how they think things in their head yes. and go over things like and, and act in those scenes described in detail through the character's head and just like the way they yeah. you know move around like you just can't do that in movies because like you can't get that description and you'd have to show it in a completely different way yeah. and it would be like 10 hours long yeah and that's not going to get a lot of views unfortunately in this day <laughs> yeah. um but i do think it really does depend on the story and with this story the concept he was trying to achieve it's so much easier to express it in a movie format because a lot of the stuff needed to be shown rather than told because you want to feel the like desperation the absence like he tried to show the lack of like communication but still communication with his son like they still had a bond but they didn't need to say anything but in a book you can't like it's all written down you have to say something and i don't think he did a good job with making like really showing just the lack of stuff happening in that world because it's so hard to in a book because it's not going to be entertaining if it's just like blank pages yeah um but i think that because you could like show just the silence in a movie and it not be awkward because of the atmosphere and just showing something mm. it better represented what this story was supposed to be yeah i think a movie was definitely a better medium and I think the director just made a lot of good choices for the story at hand. Yes. Like I think even like a lot of the, a lot of the things that he applied just to the story that he adapted and like the things that he cut. I usually don't like it when they stray far from the material, and he didn't stray. He just like made differences, and even those I'm worried about. But it worked better here. Yeah. And like I think if he would have applied that to the book, then I probably would have liked the book a little better. Yeah. It, it could have like probably you could have took it out like fifty pages at least. And it would have been a lot better. Yeah. And we're not trying to say, like... Because obviously the movie was ad adapted from the book and the concept yeah. behind it. So we're not trying to discredit Cormac McCarthy in any mm -hmm. way. Because we still think it was a brilliant idea. Just through his book wasn't the best presented way that we found it. Yeah. And uh, it's funny. Uh, I was talking... Uh, we're talking about how like uh, his writing style just kind of doesn't jive with us and how we did not enjoy reading what he put forth. Mm -hmm. uh, I, since then, I, I talked to a lot of people about Cormac McCarthy and I'm just like, man, I'm like, I don't understand why every single piece of his work is just like so highly renowned. I'm like, I'm surprised there's not more criticism. Mm -hmm. And then I was asking people around that like reading and writing, like at college, and they're all like, a lot of them are like, oh, yeah, no, I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, all, like, the people in your literature classes yeah. are, like, because it, your professor recommended him, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was talking about, um, you know, just, like, really good authors and, like, or just, like, a, uh, renowned authors. And it's, this is kind of a tangent. It's kind of funny to go off of. But, like, <laughs> this man, basically, he wanted to be a successful author so bad. So he was, like, dedicated. So he... Moved out of his house, moved up into a barn, got a typewriter, didn't even have heat or electricity, 
and then just stayed in there and then he just typed and just wrote and then his wife left him because she's like I can't live like this <laughs> and I'm like she's like I need least. hot water yeah. please she's like yep can't live like this and you know like obviously that's tragic <laughs> because but then the man came out and he wrote like five different books that are like he, he wrote all uh, No Country for Old Men I don't know if you've ever seen that movie I haven't I haven't read the book I've seen the movie yeah <laughs> just <laughs> what do you expect? Yeah. yeah. yeah like, I mean, he has an incredible story. And, like, he does. I mean, the book, The Road, was based off his, his relationship with his son in this kind of atmosphere. I mean, obviously, not exactly the same, but his I love be a fly for on the his... wall for his conversation. He's just like, okay, papa. <laughs> just all the time. Like, Where is the fire? It's here. Okay. <laughs> Are we the good guys? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> But Let's keep walking. <laughs> Do you think they walk down road? Like, that's their bonding? Is they're just yeah. strolling? They're going on stroll? Do you think that's where he thought of the idea? He was yeah. on a walk with his son, and he was like, yeah, He was I having could... the birds and the bees conversation, for sure. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's and just he like, how did I get here? And he's just like, this is awkward. It makes me feel unsettled. And now what if I kept that story? tone throughout a whole book <laughs> <laughs> and made it super bleak and post-apocalyptic? That sounds like something that would win the Pulitzer Prize. <laughs> wow, he's so good at predicting. Yeah. <laughs> what even is that? I don't know. It's like a, like a thread ball. Cool. All right. Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to do it? Hey, sorry. Our camera died, so there's a little cut in there. You might as well just kiss the computer. You know, I'm like a sorry kiss. You're so close. I'm sorry. Gosh. <laughs> Get on your knees and beg for forgiveness. <laughs> Anyways, so we've kind of just throughout this whole time talking about the book. Yeah. Oh, no, not sorry, not the book. We talked a lot about the book too, but the movie we've kind of just like complimented it so far. Well, let's kind of run through just any other differences and then give a overall feeling for it and like dislikes, things that we wish we saw or didn't see in the I movie. I think we should just start with the dislikes. Do you want to? I have other parts for the movie that I want to cover. Okay, you go. <laughs> Lead the way, right? I have two other scenes that I thought were different. Um, that were worth covering because they were main parts in the book. And I still think they were, you, it got the point across, but it was interesting seeing how the movie changed that. He's petting my dog right now. This is, this is huge because she's sitting on my foot. And like she literally despises me, but she's like loving this right now. Like, isn't that adorable? <laughs> she's finally decided she wants attention over being petty and hating you yeah but so don't don't let me distract you tell us say what say what you're gonna say yeah so you don't have to listen at all actually yeah I'll just turn it, <laughs> turn it out completely um basically uh we've kind of covered the flashbacks like the whole beginning portion of the movie and i think one of the main uh, action points i guess in the movie was when they stumbled into the house and that had like their it was like a cannibal house and they had their victims trapped in the basement mm -hmm. and the group of cannibals came back right as the father and son were like kind of going through this house and in the book they ended up escaping through the back and had to hide in the um uh, field area like just laying in the grass and i think that's when we were first introduced to where the dad was saying, like, you know, like, if you need to, like, you know how to shoot. Right. You point it up into your head rather than, like, protecting himself that the kid was supposed to use it against himself. I think that's when yeah. it was first introduced in the book. Yeah. Well, in the movie, it had already been introduced. And instead, in this scene in the movie, the director chose to keep the father and son in the house like they ran upstairs instead and were in the bathroom like with the door closed and they could hear 
them, uh, like the cannibals walking around in the house, and you could, instead of words being expressed, you just saw the dad's, like, worry, and he himself was pointing the gun at his son's head while trying to prevent the son from crying, and I think that was, like, it was impactful in the book because, like, that kind of hit me realizing, oh, like, it's not protection. It's using it to... Uh, Have mercy. Yeah. Yeah. And so that was impactful. But since they already did that in the movie, I thought this scene was still impactful because the dad was willing to do this to his son. And it kind of relates back to one of my favorite quotes that was in the movie. And I don't remember at all being in the book. Um, that was mentioned kind of earlier on, right after when they ran into that first guy that the dad had to shoot uh, to protect his son. Um, and it was, I try to look like any common traveling killer, but my heart is hammering. When it comes to the boy, I have only one question. Can you do it when the time comes? And I was... Is like, that when he's like watching him in the street? I think so, yeah. It was right after that scene. I remember that getting me too. Yeah. I was like, wow. Okay. That, like, it really puts into perspective of how deep this father's, like, love goes. Like, he wants him to keep going, moving forward, to hold out hope. But, like, he knows he needs to protect his son for more. And if he can't. And it's even more impactful because they only have one bullet. So... He can't use it on both of them. Like, it is going to his son. Yeah, so he's the one that's going to have to get eaten, essentially. Because we know in that mm-hmm. cannibal's basement, they're like... Yeah, they keep like, him prisoner. Yeah, they keep him prisoner. Not only that, but like kind of limb by limb. Yeah, they don't like, kill them. Like, because they need to keep the meat fresh. So they yeah. just... So dark. Yeah, that it's was so dark. gruesome. And I... That scene was definitely described like the book kind of did. But yeah. like, seeing it... <laughs> Hit, hit, yeah, it a little bit different. I remember reading it. I was like, I don't know, reading it. That was weird, because like when I read it and when I saw the scene, it gave me the same feeling. Like, yeah. I think that description in the book and just that whole scene in general was horrifying. So I think Cormac McCarthy really nailed it there, and the director nailed it too. Like, yes, yeah. Right, and then um, let's see. Then after that, another main scene was when they found that bunker you kind of get a feel for their hope growing like they found so much food in there and we got to see more of like the actual childlike innocence like him not knowing how to pronounce peaches or whatever fruit was on the can he's trying to sound it out and like him not knowing what it tastes like and like spam too and everything yeah Yeah. and it was spam so good i oh i love spam I will spam you reasons why. That's disgusting. I love it. You, you cook it and then you put it on something. It's like terrible quality meat, but you know, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> well, I think all meat is terrible quality. Oh, Sorry. that's right. You're a weird veggie girl. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm a veggie, okay? <laughs> she likes veggies. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, after this, I'm actually going to take a bite out of the grass out there. Yeah, you freaking cow. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, at least I don't eat human meat. You, you don't? No, not yet. Not yet. Well, because of my vegetarian diet, that's why I can go eight years without eating. Because like I you, photosynthesize. I'm gonna call you Veginator dog. Veginator. Yeah. No, like dog. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Veginator dog. Yeah, you're my Veginator dog i think that hit better the second time you said that i think it did too i'm gonna um (laughs) go drive into oncoming traffic (laughs) i thought that's what you were supposed to do yeah right after this (laughs) while i'm eating grass outside (laughs) (laughs) anyways yeah so um i did have a question oh yeah (laughs) <laughs> what is my question? <laughs> yeah. What is it? So, towards the very end, when they finally made their way to the yeah. beach, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know how the thief that they like, kind of the last oh, person yeah, against naked. them. No, 
<laughs> Not what I was trying to bring up. I know you want to talk about naked yeah. men, but... Yeah, <laughs> sorry, guys, we'll get to that. No, we won't get to that. I know you're all on the edge of your seats like, what about the naked guy? <laughs> <laughs> when at the beach, in the movie, they the boy was sick and laying, like, asleep when yeah. the man came up and stole, while in the book, he had... Like, the, both the father and the son had left to go pick up some things and left all their items. And when they got back, it was all gone. What yeah. do you think was more impactful? Um, I think in the movie, specifically, where, like, the boy fell asleep. Mm-hmm. And, like, he was supposed to, like, you know, wake him up for if somebody came around. I think that was really good because it made some conflict between him and the son that we haven't really seen. Mm-hmm. And like it made it made it that much more convincing when like you know at the end or it has that corny line where like he's just like you like the guy's like you don't understand like he's yelling at the boys like you don't understand I have to worry about everything mm-hmm. and then the boys like no you don't I do I'm like ah. <laughs> <laughs> but like it it kind of made that line hit harder because like the boy like after they made the guy get like naked and steal all this stuff like. Like, the boy, like, they're, they're having that conflict, and there's a lot of frustration built up between them. And then, like, the guys, or the man, try to explain, basically, is like, this is why we do things this way, because I'm scared, and I have to worry about everything, and you don't get it, and you're a boy. And, like, the frustration, like, when the boy says, like, I have to worry about everything, mm-hmm. hits a lot harder when they have that sort of conflict. Yeah. I think that was a good choice. Yeah. I believe that it was more impactful in the way that the movie presented it too, but for a different reason. I think when the boy was begging the dad to just forgive him, like, let him have his clothes at least. Like, don't take all of his stuff. Because in the book, the guy took it from, like, an empty beach area. He didn't know if anyone had that um, or if those people were still alive or whatever. So it's like... You know, I can't blame the guy for taking, but in the movie, he took it directly from a boy yeah, that he and, like, knew was him. there. Yeah, well, the boy was still asleep. He did bring a knife. Like, it showed that in the yeah. movie. So he was prepared, but he never had to make direct contact because the boy slept through the whole thing. But even then, the boy knew that the guy snuck up and stole all their stuff directly from him and still wanted to have mercy on him, I guess, and let him have some of the stuff and whatever. So I thought that that was more impactful and just showed the boy's dedication, yeah. I guess, to helping people, even in this kind of world. I just like that, like, like, don't get me wrong, in the book, too, like, the frustration felt on both sides from the man and the boy it made sense in the book, too, just because of, like, all that they had been through up until that point. But I think the movie really sold it, too, because, like, I felt like the frustration was not, like, in the book, it was clearly just kind of, like, frustration at their situation. Mm-hmm. But in the movie, it felt like frustration at each other yes. a lot more and I think that was just like Definitely. a good way of putting it yeah a good way of showing it and now that we've kind of ran through the whole movie um probably get into some things that we disliked or wish that we saw in the movie that was in the book so personally um even though I think it, honestly it was very accurate and it was exactly what I kind of expected from a movie and wanted to see like all the scenes I actually enjoyed I got to see and I think it really showed me how descriptive his writing could be and what they could use to show that and made it more impactful um but I do believe as kind of we touched on at the end that the father and son dynamic uh was different like their relationship was focused on differently and honestly i feel like the story was kind of more of a reflective kind of love letter to the wife that the father was not necessarily writing literally but figuratively because we saw the wife around a lot more like throughout the whole movie and i think towards the end there was even another flashback where he was describing the son and like on like missing the wife and showing how their son had 
um, become and what he was doing in this kind of world and how hopeful he still was and caring. And so I feel like the, he was writing figuratively this letter from the, uh, from the form of the boy, uh, just like how he was shown, since it was the wife's son too, of course, mm -hmm. and showing like this is what it could have been with all of us. Um, which I don't know necessarily how I felt about it since the story was supposed to be more of a father-son dynamic, even though I liked seeing the wife, it was more focused on his uh, longing for her rather than the actual father and son bond. Yeah. I'm trying to think of something that I like really didn't like. Because I, I think kind of touched on this before there wasn't really anything wrong mm -hmm. like I, I couldn't really spot a thing in the movie where I was like uh didn't like that or like yeah that kind of sucked but it kind of all worked and I don't think there's really many complaints I could have that are like objective yeah which is like you know, you know what and like since I've just said that I feel like I need to raise my rating I feel like it's probably like 3.5, 3.75 out of 5. Because it's pretty good. I'm trying to think of something I really didn't like. Oh, yeah. Well, this also goes for the book, too. I mentioned this in the last book. There was that stupid scene where he shoots the guy with the flare gun, and he kills him, and they could have just left it at that. And the wife's like, why did you do that, asshole? What do you think? <laughs> right, yeah. So I dumb. Remember. I hated I hated that. And I hated even more seeing it. I was like, this is such a dumb scene. Right. <laughs> Please take it out. I know they had to keep it in because that's where he got injured and ultimately died. But, like, yeah. please stop. <laughs> it was so dumb. I didn't need to see that interaction. I think that was that whole thing was pointless. He could have just got shot with the arrow. And then you could have just seen the wife huddling over the dead husband. And the guy right. could have just walked away. And that could have been that. <laughs> there was genuinely no reason for him to go up there either. Like, yeah. I understand... Maybe, I guess, to check if he was dead and wasn't going to come after them yeah. again. But he left the woman alive. I was like, why wouldn't she just grab the bow and arrow yeah. and shoot him? Yeah. Maybe she doesn't know how, but at least she, yeah, I would then, try. But she's going to call him an asshole <laughs> and say, why did you do that? Oh, my gosh. It was, was the so... dumb, like One of the dumbest lines of dialogue. And I might just be overanalyzing that scene, but I, I hated it. Like, no, it was unrealistic. It was I, I really hated it. I, I, I wish they like, changed that. Yeah, I wish they changed that. So you know what? There you go. That's my critique about the movie. <laughs> that was a stupid scene. They should have just taken it out. Either that or changed it. Any other yeah. change would have been good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and my stomach just growled. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> it's angry too. Yeah, Didn't my like stomach's that scene. Pissed. <laughs> but yeah, I think the father and son dynamic was different and I don't think I I think it was nice and but are interesting in both aspects and I appreciated more in the movie but it wasn't necessarily true to the book mm. um, in all forms so take it how it is that's up to debate I guess yeah. but I, like I it liked more. it better in the movie Yeah. yeah. Um, and I do think the child didn't have as much development just character growth but there really wasn't much anyways in the book <laughs> kind of hard yeah um, and then so that's our critique again yeah. director change the story <laughs> even though we're some story purists change it yeah but then lastly I would say you didn't really get to feel the whole length of the road though like them traveling which I think you got more of the yeah cont like just the never ending almost which wasn't necessarily a great thing in the book because it was pretty boring no, I hated that. but it was an important aspect to show how long it took them to get to their destination and how long i'm gonna disagree with you on that one really yeah i i think that was fantastic that that was cut out <laughs> <laughs> and i could get that because they just look grimy and they're tired and they're skinny i'm like okay they've been traveling for a while <laughs> that's all okay, the yeah, i, I mean. guess. <laughs> I was I so feel, happy they cut that out. Like, I didn't necessarily like it in the book, but I do think that was an important aspect. Sure. Of just that is one. I guess I see what you're saying. I, the book with that that was an advantage the book had. 
Yeah. Where it could be boring. (laughs) It could be boring. (laughs) And then everybody accepts it because it's literature. (laughs) (laughs) It's okay to be boring if you add a few smart words. (laughs) Yeah. You throw in some $12 words every now and then and just confuse the reader, make them grab their dictionary or look it up on their phone. (laughs) It must be brilliant if it has this (laughs) word in it. My man had this thesaurus nearby for sure. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, I would say overall... Great adaptation. Um, the movie left me in, or going back on my rating, I still rate, even though I think it was a good ad- adaptation, I still rated it three out of five stars because it left me in the same place as the book, which was not a great feeling. Like, I just felt like there was genuinely no Nothing point. resolved. Yeah. It's still, like, I don't yeah. understand why there was a happy ending, honestly, because yeah. how did... What happened yeah. to deserve that, and how did these people just like find them? And it, I don't know. You did see the them in the movie though. That yeah, is, that at is the movie. end, which but at the more towards like middle. Oh yeah, it just I don't know. It it didn't make any sense. And if they knew of these people before, like why didn't they help the dad? It just felt so because weird. the dad was stand up. Uh, I, I didn't, I, There's I'm, probably I'm, reason. I'm, I'm making up a reason, but I kind of I, I agree with you. So I'm like, yeah, no, yeah. I I didn't like the ending either. I feel like he just got tired of writing. <laughs> and then he's like, all right, seems like a good spot to just stop. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like he decided, okay, yeah, now I gotta wrap this up. Yeah, because genuinely, the also again shows that the kid had no character growth. Is because the yeah. dad's trying to protect him and say, hey, it's not all rainbows and butterflies in this world you can't be nice to everyone they are trying to use you first person he sees is very nice too <laughs> <laughs> and then the kid kind of shows like how do i trust you or whatever but then ends up trusting like this whole group because yeah. they say i have kids too it's like doesn't that doesn't mean anything your kids yeah. could be eating people i don't know it was weird oh they also had a dog that That'll do it yeah. actually i would go with a person the they had a dog well, i mean that that means they're well off <laughs> I mean, if they can afford to feed a dog. Yeah, but if you're it, just feeding it, yeah. it people, it's just, it didn't make any sense based yeah. off of what we knew of the apocalypse, which is barely anything, but Ooh, we yeah. knew that there were cannibals, and suddenly these people aren't cannibals. I'm trying to think of, it, I feel like it, if they would have ended the story, this is more just of like, <laughs> I feel like these these complaints at this point aren't even directed at the movie. It's just the story as in general, like that Cormac McCarthy wrote. Yeah. If they would have ended it in some sort of way where like at the very end, even though his father died, not only did he find new people, but then the sun comes out or something. <laughs> you know, you're just like, okay, so there's some hope. Right. Life can go on. But no, it just it's, you're just right back in that... Right, at the beginning. I mean, yeah. who's to say he's not going to walk back along yeah. the road, back up with this new family? And, and who's gonna... to say the kids aren't going to, like, start starving and, like, try to eat him? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's a bleak ending. And I've, I've, I've heard somebody say this before, too. They're just like, yeah, well, they say it's, like, a happy ending, but it's not because it's the same situation. Food's still running out. And yeah. all they can do is just keep walking. It's like, oh, well, nothing's resolved. Yeah, nothing yeah. changed in and the environment. And that boy's gonna die. <laughs> it, this is definitely, I mean, it shows dynamic from person to person, but it is still a man versus nature story. Yeah. And nothing changed in the nature. Yeah. Nothing really changed the in the man just either. Died. Yeah. Yeah. So. In the end, it left off on the same note. So I still don't think that the movie was that great even though i think they did well with what they had which i didn't personally highly think or didn't think that highly of and so i don't think that highly uh, or not that great about this movie i guess and it's that's the why same it's in story the just different mediums and i think yeah yeah i i think that's valid but we have better stories coming up yeah. <laughs> like way better. Like ones that we're actually excited about because we we actually enjoyed them a whole lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, we don't know. Yeah. At least I don't know. I haven't finished the next book. <laughs> I mean, I haven't either. But I'm like really close to the end, and I'm I'm yeah. loving it the whole time. Yeah. But yeah, we I am excited for the next book. Yeah. I'm looking really forward. 
I'm lo- looking forward to it. Yeah, and it's funny because like both these books that we're talking about are more than like more than what three hundred pages. Like both are like four hundred something. Four hundred. Four hundred ish pages, like longer I'm on books. Page ten. <laughs> yeah, but they're longer ish books. But at the same time, like I'm breezing through it, I like faster than the road because like it's just such a better story. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely, even like The Martian, like was so, even though I think that one was longer too than The Road, we went through that way quicker and I definitely see myself like I'm a behind recently but that's just from being busy in my personal life but I am looking forward to this book I don't see myself falling asleep after five pages yeah I'm excited so tune in next week that's it we're done (laughs) (laughs) next week is the last book I'm sick of this (laughs) (laughs) all right yeah so like and subscribe Clearly, we know how to end these things. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. I just click it. Yep. Yeah, just click it. So you guys never. <laughs>